What's up everybody, Blue Gabe. I am so sick and tired of the wind in Florida, so we decided to come bird hunting. The ocean's probably 27 foot right now and it's been that away for like the last week. But you know what, I love hunting. I've never done bona fide quail hunting with dogs. Well guess what, that's all changing today. Got some pretty little dogs, look at this. This is a high end bird dog. I got him out of Georgia. He's he's sort of a, a pointer and a flusher. Let's go. Look over there. Look. Let's we go. are live and in action. All right, you ready? Yeah. Back in. Dang, I just did that joker and it kept flying. Right there. Very small for me. What the? Up here. Thank hey. Good boy. Heel. Come here. Oh, he's on point right there. Goodness! These things are like rocket ships. So when you're out here, it is a lot about safety. Yeah, this is super fun, but the dog was in there and the bird came at me. There's no way I'm gonna shoot into that palmetto head. I let him come past my face. I just couldn't run him down. On to the next one. Looked like that didn't take long. That's a happy dog if you've ever seen one. Got him! Bring him up. Backing. That last one. It only takes three. One, two, Hunt dead, and Hank. three kills them. I want you, hit that, you hit that last one with every pellet. <laughs> I dusted that one. Good boy, bring him up here. Up here. Up here. Up here. Good boy. Yeah. Now, as far as picking our shells up, just like on the snipe video, for those of y'all that watched my snipe video, we can only make a video like 30 minutes long. I didn't sit there and show you guys us picking the bullets up because that would have taken up so much time, but don't think we don't do it. We come down these roads when we're done hunting and pick all of our shells up. Some of them, a very few of them might make it in the woods that we don't see, but for the most part, we pick them up. I think I winged him. You got him. He went down right there by that brown bush. Little Hank is hot on the trail. That little clip is a testimony to how tough these dogs are. These bushes out here are nasty, sharp, pokey, and these dogs do this day in and day out. These are working dogs. Good job, Hank. He's like, yeah. I'm the man. Up here, up here, up here. Hey. <laughs> He's proud. <laughs> He's such a pretty he little He should dog. be, that was a team effort. Good it was a team boy. kill. Give him up here. Good boy, good boy. Now for those of y'all bird hunters that have dogs, Hank's 10 months old. He just caught that bird alive. Adam shot it, it flew 100 yards. We jumped it again, he didn't want to shoot because Hank was in the way. Hank just run it down and caught it, so. Every now and then you gotta let a dog be a dog. All right, so in case any of y'all are wanting to know what I'm shooting, I'm shooting, it's either an M4 or an M2, I don't know. It's a 20 gauge Benelli, it's super light, doesn't kick, and they say these things are bulletproof. I've never owned a really expensive gun before, so I said, you know what, I got a little bit extra money, 
I bought my nine-year-old and myself a matching set. His is the youth model, mine's the adult model, and it's 20 gauge. I turkey hunt with a 20 gauge. If I'm running deer dogs and shooting buckshot, I use a 20 gauge, and I'm quail hunting with a 20 gauge. It's just how we roll. Two first. Hunt dead, Hank. Hunt dead in there. In there. Hunt dead. That bird fell in the nasty stuff. There he comes. Good go, boy. Hank. Good boy. Bring him up here. Up here. Up here. Good boy. Good boy. Y'all, we don't know if we got that last one on film or not, but I just dusted two out of a cubby. I've been trying to wait until they get out there a little bit so I know the dog's safe, but that time they went that away and the dog went that away, so I cut loose. We just don't know if we got it on film. We're gonna shoot two or three more times and we're getting out of here. Because what we really came for is food. I've got that grouper throat that's that big and we got a bunch of wild quail to eat. I don't know where it's starting to rain, so. We've killed six or eight birds. Now we know this footage isn't the best. I've got my little camera, but we're gonna come back. Robert, deer meat for dinner, my brother Aubrey Arrington and I, with a cameraman for each person and have a quail shooting competition. I'm ready. I'm ready, I'm ready Freddy. Back Hank. I got one of them, and my gun only had two bullets in it. Hey, that's not my fault. The best cubby of quail so far and I only had two bullets. Did you see where that bird died? No. He's got it he's already. Got it. Good job, Hank. Good boy. Bring him here. You know he's going to point again soon. Bring him here. Good boy. Bring him up here. Up here. Up here. Good boy. Dude, they almost like startle you when that many comes out. Oh yeah, it's hard to single one out. I've yeah. got multiple ten birds. Right here, right, 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 right. Yes, sir. Got him that second shot. Good boy. Good boy. That was pretty neat. I like to watch the dogs work, y'all. Can y'all hear that? <laughs> that whistling noise you hear is these bob white quail. I just did it one time and little old Hank just ran over and jumped on me like he was fitting to flush me. They're telling everybody right now, Blue Gabe's in the field. Duck or bleed. I hate this GoPro on my head. That's the dumbest invention ever is a GoPro head mount. You don't even know when you were recording. You can't even see him no more. <laughs> it's so dark, Adam said I couldn't even see him. Y'all, that's it, we're done. Don't go anywhere though, because we're heading back to the lodge to cook up an insanely good meal. Quail and grouper, that's right, that's three grouper shows in a row because you know what? We killed an 84 pound black. We're gonna eat every bit of them. Did you see that quail about hit no me bird. in the head? <laughs> no bird Hank, come here. But once it gets daylight tomorrow, we're sleeping out here. We're gonna show you this awesome hotel, his awesome lodge, and then tomorrow morning, we're gonna get up and shoot some sporting clays and show you just how beautiful this ranch is. This is sort of one of those vlog style videos. We're just having fun. All right, y'all, we are in Chef Mike's kitchen. Look at this. That's the throat to that giant black grouper. Now, Chef's got a big marinade. Tell him what's in this marinade. We got carrots, turmeric, curry, a little bit of galanga, which is like um, kind of from like the ginger family, some fresh ginger, fresh garlic, a little bit of pineapple juice, a little bit of lemon lime juice, and some soy sauce. We kind of juiced the carrots and then blended it all up, and we kind of got this aromatic, sweet, salty, spicy, a little bit of sourness in there, kind of marinated. We got that curry and that turmeric to kind of pop this color out a little bit. So Make we... it pop, pop it like it's hot. But look at this. These are the ribs, that's individual grouper ribs. You tell me when the last time you saw a grouper rib that big. So 
We're gonna steam these into banana leaves in the oven. Or did I word that right? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, y'all know I'm not in. We're gonna keep that moisture inside. This we're gonna keep. We like things exactly. moist, especially when we're eating them. So we're gonna. <laughs> then we're gonna take these group of ribs, fry them, take this out of those banana leaves, and just put them fried ribs on top and drizzle some kind of a sauce. It's gonna be so good. I'm right, basically rubbing some of that marinade on these banana leaves right now. This is coated. We're gonna do fin side down. We're gonna kind of fold that meat in a little bit. And we're gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. Look at that bone right there. Come back the other way and kind of just tighten it up through there. Perfect. Now we're ready for the oven right now. About 375, 350, 375, maybe about 25 minutes. We'll check it then. And uh, we're looking for about 130 by the bone and we'll be good to go. 130, that means 130 degrees. So we're gonna take the ribs and put them in the same thing. This is the piece of belly meat underneath the ribs and between the ribs and the skin. That's a huge chunk of meat. Once the throat's done, we'll take it out, fry these ribs for just a second and put them on top. It's gonna to be oh so delicious. Look at that. doing now? We're gonna make a uh, honey garlic glaze for the grouper ribs. So it's basically a little bit of chicken base, a lot of honey, a lot of garlic, and a little bit of soy sauce and a little bit of water. We're gonna just reduce that down with some sugar too and it's gonna be good. All right y'all, the place is filling up for lunch and we're getting ready to fry these ribs. The banana wrap throat is almost done. These ribs smell amazing. We got a little cornstarch, a little flour, about 50-50 ratio. Just pull them out the marinade, got a lot of, most of the marinade off. And we're just gonna go in that peanut oil about 365. We're gonna make sure they're dredged good. Have you ever cooked a fish rib that big? Never, first time. Dude, that smell is amazing. How many stars do you get in this place? 12 out of 5. 12 That's out of 5. <laughs> so these guys are having a big bachelor party out here. Comfortable, relaxing, shooting sporting clays. What else? Did y'all hog hunt? Hog hunted yesterday. Hog hunted yesterday. They fed the gators. That's a cool thing out here. This is something you can do out here that you can't do anywhere. You can feed massive giant alligators. All right, ladies and gentlemen, look at that. What are we working with? We're gonna glaze it with the honey garlic glaze, chicken base, soy sauce, fresh ginger, fresh garlic, water, a little slurry, and a lot of honey. And uh, we're gonna glaze these beautiful ribs right here. Look at that. Look at those ribs, once in a lifetime right here. I'll get you one for Christmas, And we got some nugs right here from that cheek meat and that jaw meat. Man, that looks good. So for those of y'all that are just tuning in, that is the giant throat off the huge black grouper we caught a couple days ago. And those ribs are individual grouper ribs. These chunks right here are the big belly piece of meat. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh, you're going fancy with the sesame seeds. Yeah, buddy. All right, y'all, y'all wanna come try some of this or what? Hell yeah! Oh, hell yeah. Just set it up here and let him try it. All right, come dig in. I need honest opinions with no cuss words. <laughs> Keep it clean, wow. boys. Epic, man. Wow. You like it? Awesome. Flavor's amazing. Good. Wow. Tender. Wow. What's that sauce? Unbelievable. That rib meat is just yeah. off the bone. Unbelievable. Mason's going in there for that cheek meat, throat meat. Y'all, this is Mason Lightsey. His parents own the place. You saw him in the, my, one of my first videos, the lobster video down in the Keys where I teach you how to catch him with the tickle sticking in that. Mason was in it. You're the man, Gabe. No, you the man. You're the look, man. Look at that rib. Look at that. Man. Oh, that was good. Grab a stick. Lewis. Lewis. 
Oh my god. Now that's a rib bone. That's as big as a 100 pound hog rib. Damn. You nailed it, buddy. Come on, Adam, let's try it. Let's see what this is all about. So good, man. You liked it? So, so good. Fire. Good work, Mike. That's amazing. Never in a million years where I thought rib meat. Yeah. You notice how everybody went to the ribs and not only Mason has tried the big throat. Ribs are just a thing. I think anytime you have a gathering and there's ribs in the area, they're going to get eight first. Never in a million years, man. Look at that. We eat group of ribs in South Florida, not pork ribs. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, sauce is like the sauce. Mm. Y'all, that sauce is insane. How was the throat meat, Mason? Pretty good. The ribs are the best. Mm -hmm. Just look at that white meat. Nobody saw that. South Florida fish ribs instead of pork ribs. Thank you, sir. You gotta just look at the camera and tell us your honest opinion. Grab that fin, eat it off the fin. Use the fin like a lollipop. Like a lollipop. Absolutely. You could tell how far off the bone that was. Mmm. I just cleaned it right there. Slurp it off like a crab claw. Mmm. All right, y'all, I have to make a confession. I'm the only YouTuber that does catch, clean, and cooks that forgot to do the clean and cook of what we actually caught. Hey, I got so sidetracked in cooking that awesome grouper throat, but that's the last bit of that giant black grouper that we had. So now we can get back to doing the normal day-to-day -day catch, clean, and cooks. But don't worry, because I have those quail. I brought the quail home with me, and I'm doing a bass fishing video here soon that I can't keep the bass at the lake we're going to. So that's when I'm gonna cook that quail. And it's gonna be so good. I've already done a little bit of research on how I wanna do them. Ain't gonna share any of the beans though. You're gonna to have to wait till that video. So now let's get right back into Lightsy Family Ranch, you guys. I'm gonna take you out to the pavilion where they do the weddings and show you all that. And I'm gonna take you to the five stand where they shoot sporting clays. That's right, you can shoot sporting clays there. You can have a wedding birthday parties, business meetings, anything you can imagine you can have there. It's affordable, super nice. Their hotel rooms are so nice. Chef Mike, you've seen him in the last two videos. Five star all day. But right now, I gotta get out of here. I gotta hook to my boat, cause I'm going to film the next show, y'all. It's time to get up out of here. And like Jake always says, we're getting the heck out of shape. We'll see y'all.